today we take a trip down memory lane to revisit some of the biggest tech blunders of all time. Before we dive in, here's a fun question for you. Which tech fail was known for its superior video quality but lost due to shorter recording times? A. Apple Newton B. Sony Betamax C. Microsoft Zune or D. Amazon Fire Phone Put your answer in the comments below and stick around to find out the answer at the end of the video. Now grab your slap bracelets and dust off that Walkman because we're diving into the top 10 tech fails. First on the list, we have Google Glass. Remember when we thought we'd be strutting around like the Terminator sporting high-tech specs? Turns out, the reality was more ET phone home and press hasta la vista baby. With privacy concerns popping up faster than a Rubik's Cube at a sleepover and a price tag heftier than your cassette tape collection, it flopped like a bad breakdance move. Lesson learned? Perhaps it's best to leave the sci-fi dreams to the big screen and stick to quoting Back to the Future instead. Next up, we have the Apple Newton. This personal digital assistant was marketed as the cool tech of the future, but its handwriting recognition was about as reliable as a magic 8-ball on a bad day. Seriously, it was like trying to decode a message from the Ghostbusters Ecto-1. The lesson here, before launching your gadget, maybe ensure it actually functions better than trying to figure out how to program your VCR. Otherwise, you'll end up in the bargain bin faster than you could say totally tubular. Ah, the Zune. Microsoft's attempt to crash the portable music party, arriving fashionably late like a 90s boy band reunion that no one asked for. It promised to be the killer app that would topple the iPod, but instead, it felt more like a forgotten relic next to your old cassette collection. Without a solid ecosystem, the Zune was less hello and much more bye bye bye, kind of like that one friend who always mixed up the lyrics to its promise of a music revolution fizzled faster than your neon windbreaker after an intense round of break dancing. Let's not forget the tastefully bland advertisements that scream I'm trying too hard so loud you could hear it over the boombox blasting mixtapes at every party. The lesson, if you want to make a splash in tech, make sure you show up on time, bring something fresh, and for goodness sake, please come equipped with a killer playlist. Otherwise, you might just end up lost in the shuffle, like that one VHS tape nobody wants to rewind. The fire phone ignited with hope but burned out faster than a dial-up connection on a busy Friday night. With a price tag higher than your wildest dreams and no standout features, it fizzled out like the last slice of pizza at a slumber party. Seriously. It was like bringing a list of songs to a karaoke night and forgetting the lyrics to Sweet Caroline. The lesson here, know your audience better than you know your AOL password. Otherwise, you might end up with a gadget that's more of a dud than a B-movie sequel that nobody asked for. So remember, a little market research goes a long way unless you want your invention to vanish quicker than your favorite childhood TV show. Betamax was like the laser disc of video formats, technically superior but practically about as useful as a broken alarm clock. It boasted better picture quality and longer recording times, but in the war of video formats, it lost to VHS faster than you could say don't stop believing. Because at the end of the day, people wanted to record more than just an episode of Friends or the latest music video from MTV. They needed to have full seasons of soap operas and movies at their fingertips. While Betamax was rocking the technical side of things, it failed to understand that consumers wanted convenience over quality when it came to their home entertainment. In a showdown reminiscent of the epic battles in 80s action movies, VHS delivered the goods, longer tape, wider availability, and a range of titles that put it ahead in the hearts and living rooms of viewers everywhere. So, the lesson here is clear. If you want your tech to win over consumers, focus not just on being the coolest kid in the arcade. Make sure you're meeting their actual needs, like letting them binge watch Full House without worrying about tape lengths. Otherwise, you might end up like Betamac, left in the dust of tech history while VHS parties with all the popular kids. Vista was the operating system equivalent of a 90s pop-up ad, super annoying and almost impossible to get rid of. Launched with great fanfare, it quickly turned into a cautionary tale of tech missteps. With a resource-hogging appetite that made it run slower than dial-up internet on a rainy day, Vista became infamous for its incompatibility with existing software. Users found themselves facing a frustrating wall of errors while trying to run programs that had smoothly operated on Windows XP. It was enough to make even the most patient computer user want to throw their mouse out the window. Like that one irritating pop-up ad that insists of offering you more free ringtones, Vista's problems were hard to ignore and even harder to close. People just wanted a sleek, efficient operating system, but instead they got a convoluted labyrinth of features that left many yearning for the simplicity of their old setups. 
So the lesson here, compatibility is key, just like your favorite pair of acid wash jeans. You know the ones that fit just right and never go out of style. After all, if your tech can play nicely with what's already out there, you risk becoming the outdated fan that nobody wants to deal with. Remember, nobody wants an OS that feels like desperately trying to squeeze back into last season's fashion. Quibi was the tech version of a one-hit wonder, briefly catchy but ultimately forgettable, much like that earworm Macarena you can shake off. Launched with the promise of bite-sized content designed for viewing on the go, it completely missed the mark when the world shifted to binge-watching from the comfort of home during the pandemic. Instead of being the innovative platform it aimed to be, Quibi became a case study in missed opportunities. While shows were meant to be consumed in quick, mobile-friendly snippets, the timing couldn't have been worse. As viewers settled in with their couch snacks and favorite blankets, they were not looking for a 5-10 to 10 minute distraction but rather immersing themselves in longer series and movies. People wanted to lose themselves in episodes of The Office or entire seasons of their beloved shows, not scroll through many episodes on their phones. In the end, just like that catchy song that plays at every wedding but never really lasts beyond summer, Quibi couldn't adapt and quickly flamed out. The lesson? To stand the test of time. Content creators need to be in tune with what audiences really want. Don't just ride the wave of trends. Anticipate them. Otherwise, you risk becoming a fleeting memory in the ever-evolving landscape of entertainment. So aim for more than a viral hit or you might just end up in the shuffle of tech failures. The Apple Lisa was indeed ahead of its time, boasting features like a graphical user interface and multitasking capabilities that were revolutionary for its era. However, with a price tag that could buy a lifetime supply of Pogs and then some, it was destined to be a niche product rather than a mainstream success. At around $9,995,000 at launch in 1983, the Lisa was priced out of reach for most consumers and even many businesses, making it a luxury item rather than a practical tool. While the technology was groundbreaking, the high cost made it hard for potential buyers to justify the investment. For many, the idea of spending that much money on a computer felt like buying a fancy sports car that could only drive in the driveway. Impressive but ultimately impractical. The lesson here is crystal clear. Make sure your product is worth the hype and the price. If you're going to charge a premium, you need to deliver features and benefits that truly resonate with your target audience. Otherwise, you risk becoming a footnote in tech history. Remembered for your lofty ambitions than for your actual impact. Just like you wouldn't want to trade all your pogs for something that doesn't live up to its promise, consumers won't shell out big bucks for a product that doesn't deliver real value. So keep the balance between innovation and affordability, and you might just avoid the fate of the Apple Lisa. The IBM PC Jr. is a perfect example of a product that tried to cater to a new audience but ended up feeling awkward and unnecessary, much like a 90s sitcom spin-off that struggles to find its footing. Launched in 1984, it was meant to be a more accessible version of the IBM PC, aimed at the home market. However, its design choices and price point ultimately led to its downfall. The PC Jr. was marketed as a budget-friendly computer but at the price of around $1,200. It didn't quite deliver on value. Its attempt to utilize a unique, incompatible keyboard and proprietary adapter made it less user-friendly, alienating potential buyers who were used to the more straightforward design of existing PCs. And when users attempted to install additional software, many found themselves facing a frustrating compatibility maze, which felt more like a a bad plot twist than a seamless experience. Just as sitcom spin-offs can fall flat without the right cast chemistry and humor, the PC Jr. missed the mark on user experience. It lacks the user-friendly design elements that are so crucial for a product aimed at every consumer. If people can navigate the technology easily or feel that it's a hassle to use, they're not going to stick around for the sequel. So the lesson, user-friendly design is as essential as a good laugh track. Just like a sitcom needs that cheerful reminder of fun, your product needs to be intuitive and enjoyable to use. If you want to create a hit, ensure that it meets the real needs of your audience. Otherwise, you risk becoming another awkward footnote in tech history, remembered only for its attempts at greatness. Google Plus launched in 2011 with the ambitious goal of being a social media platform that could rival Facebook, but it ultimately stumbled in its execution. The interface was cluttered and complex, making it difficult for users to navigate and engage with the content. It tried to introduce unique features like circles for organizing contacts and hangouts for video chatting, but many users found these concepts confusing or unnecessary. 
like a high schooler trying to sit at the cool kids table but misjudging the social dynamics, Google Plus failed to attract a broad user base. Existing social media users were hesitant to switch or adopt another platform, especially one that didn't offer compelling reasons or incentives to do so. As a result, Google Plus found itself struggling to retain users when it couldn't clearly define its value proposition for a foster and vibrant community. The final nail in the coffin came when security issues led to data breaches, which raised further concerns about privacy and trust. The platform was shut down for consumers in 2019 after failing to gain significant traction, despite Google's efforts to integrate it with various services. The lesson here is clear, if you're trying to join the cool kids table or in this case, the competitive social media landscape, you need to bring something valuable to the mix. Simplicity, clear benefits, and user incentives are essential to attracting and retaining an audience. Without those elements, you risk isolating your users and ending up in the wrong social scene, where you neither fit in nor thrive. So remember, it's crucial to understand your audience and deliver a platform that meets their needs. Otherwise, you might just become a cautionary tale in the world of tech. And now, the moment you've been waiting for, the answer to our question. If you guessed B, Sony Betamax, you're right. Thanks for joining us on this nostalgic journey through tech blunders. Be sure to check out our next video on emerging tech trends showing on your screen now.